I'm back with the Pathfinder question. I'd given this question as a practice problem at the end of the previous rare video on the kinetic inductance of electrons. If you haven't watched that video, please do so because I'll be using that concept in this in this question. I've attached the link in the description. So do watch that video before proceeding. So let's have a look at this question. I'm just going to read this aloud. A ring of mean radius R and cross-sectional area A is made up of perfectly conducting wire. The perfectly conducting wire means that the resistance is zero. Inductance L of the ring is so small that the inertia of free electrons cannot be neglected in the current building process. That means the kinetic inductance cannot be taken as negligible because the inertia of the electrons contribute to the kinetic energy of the electrons. And we saw that in the kinetic inductance video that kinetic energy of electrons contribute to the kinetic inductance. The free electron density in the conductor is n, mass of an electron is m and the modulus of charge on an electron is e. Initially, the ring is placed in a uniform magnetic field with its plane parallel to the induction vector b. So, you can see the diagram. I am going to take the area vector inwards. That is a choice. I have denoted the area vector of the loop by a dash. And that is a choice. I can take it outwards or inwards. That is my choice. It won't make a difference to the final answer. So, what is the question? Find the current in the ring after it is turned through an angle of 90 degrees. And in the previous rare video, I had told you that the axis which was missing in the question is the diameter perpendicular to the magnetic field and it is rotated in this manner. So, the ring is rotated about its diameter. So, let us have a look at how we will solve this question. So, a perfect conductor implies that resistance is 0. And if resistance is 0, the net EMF in the loop will also be 0 because I can write net EMF in the loop as IR and R is 0, the net EMF is 0. If the net EMF is 0, then that means that the net flux is constant because EMF is rate of change of flux by Faraday's law. The only thing here is that the net flux has to include the kinetic, the flux associated with the kinetic inductance as well. So, I can write the net flux is self flux, self due to the self inductance plus the kinetic inductance ka flux plus any external magnetic field ka flux. So, I will have self inductance flux would be L into Y, kinetic inductance say associated flux would be LK into Y and the external flux would be B dot A. Here A I am referring it to as A dash because the question already uses A as the cross sectional area. So, L plus LK, I am just referring it to as L net, the net inductance which includes the kinetic inductance. So, this is the flux due to the self inductance as well as kinetic inductance plus the flux due to the external magnetic field. Now, what was kinetic inductance? Once again, I am going to refer you to the video on kinetic inductance whose link I have put in the description. We had derived the kinetic inductance is ML by NE squared A where m was mass of one electron, l was the loop length, which in this case would be 2 pi r. n is the free electron density, e is the charge of an electron and a was a cross-sectional area. Alright, so what we are going to do is, we are going to set the condition that the net flux has to be a constant in a perfect conductor. So, I am just going to write the initial flux, I am going to write the final flux and I am going to equate it by including the kinetic inductance as well. So, let us have a look. So, this is the initial setup. These are the magnetic field lines and area vector I have chosen it to be inwards for the loop. And you can see that the initial external flux will be 0 because the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector is 90 degree. So, dot product will be 0. Initially, current is also 0 and therefore, the entire net flux will be 0 because current is 0 the cell flux and the kinetic uh, inductance flux will be 0 and the external flux is anyway 0. So, the entire total flux is 0 and therefore, the total flux always has to be 0 no matter how you rotate the ring. Now, this is the final configuration where I have rotated, I have rotated the 
ring about the vertical axis about the diameter and you can see as I rotate it the area vector which was pointing inwards is now pointing to the left. So the external flux is going to be minus b into the area vector of the loop minus b times a dash which is the magnitude of the area vector because the angle between the magnetic field lines and area vector is 180 degree. This is the external flux and the rest will be L net into Y where L net would be once again the self inductance plus LK. And now it is very straightforward all you have to do is equate this to 0 because the total flux has to be 0 and current will therefore be B into A dash which is pi R squared. Here A dash is pi r squared the loop area divided by the net inductance and the net inductance is once again L plus LK and I had already showed you what LK is ML by any square where you substitute LS to pi r and that is it. So that is how you get the final current in the loop. So it is a very straightforward solution once you have learnt the concept of kinetic inductance. Just an alternate way to arrive at the flux equation is you can also imagine that your loop is, is has some inductance L resistance R and some external EMF E. This is not this is not necessary that it is actual it is an actual battery. It this external EMF can be due to uh, some motional EMF it can be due to some changing magnetic field whatever. It is just for representation that I have drawn it this way. So, my circuit equation will be E external minus L dr by dt minus IR is 0. This is my circuit equation for an RL circuit. However, for a perfect conductor, resistance is 0, and taking into account kinetic inductance, I will have to write L as L net. Now, external EMF, I can write it as minus d phi by dt, where phi is the external flux, and then you can just see that uh, just manipulating just cancelling out the negative sign and you can see that the derivative of this entire term phi external plus L net i is 0. That means this entire term should be constant. The phi external flux plus L net i should be constant which is pretty much what we had used here. That the net flux which is L net i plus the external flux is a constant. So, just another way to arrive at this equation. So, I hope you guys have understood this solution and many of you were able to get the answer as well in the comments. So, I was very happy to see that. Alright, that is it for today. Good night.